we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Vega. Here. Councilmember Cordova. Here. Councilmember Ball. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Dirk Starbuck. Present. Mayor Janelle Osborne. Reverend Kwan, would you lead us in an invocation, please? Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for this gorgeous land we inhabit, a land inhabited by our Chumash sisters and brothers long before most of our ancestors arrived here. We thank you for all the wonderful wildlife with which we share it, for soil that produces an air that is clean, for pristine beaches and green hills, for the rains that are once again filling our reservoirs. But most of all, for all the beautiful people who have chosen to make Lompoc their home, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you for all those people. We pray for our children, that, they might, that we might instill in them a love of learning, discerning minds, healthy bodies, and compassionate hearts. We pray for our teens, that they might establish friendships that nurture the value of wholesome living and hard work, and that they might seek a path forward in life that enables them to become the people you created them to be. We pray for people in their middle ages who are trying to figure out how to best support themselves and their loved ones. May Lompoc be a place where there are jobs that pay livable wages. We pray for our seniors and our elderly that they might know that we still value them for who they are and what they have to offer. And then, oh God, tonight we pray for this city council. Those who have been called to govern, we pray that they might always be looking for ways to continue to improve the quality of life for all the people who live here, for the high and mighty and the last and the lowly. And as always, tonight's agenda is full. We pray that decisions might be made based upon what is fair and compassionate and perhaps even what's pleasing in your sight. We pray they might continue to find ways to develop much needed new housing, that they might continue to be mindful of the environmental impact of all of their decisions, and that they seek ways to improve our technological capacity as a city as they run through the agenda tonight. Oh God, bless these council members and bless our beloved little city of Lompoc, amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Stallings, a report from the chamber, please. Pro Tem Mayor Starbuck and council members, city officials, and community members. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Davika Stalling. I am the CEO of Lompoc Chamber. I am a lifelong resident of Lompoc. I was born and raised here, attended school here, and have raised my 17-year-old daughter here. Those who truly know me know that I am fully invested in helping our community thrive. When I accepted this position almost two years ago, I had no idea the struggles I would face to reestablish and maintain the integrity of the chamber. I came into this role having zero staff, zero volunteers, and six board members. In previous years, the chamber has had a total of four staff and a large team of volunteers. The chamber now has a staff of 13 board members who are very diverse and are a true representation of our community. Total of two full-time staff, myself and our communications director, Myra Soto. Although challenging, we have been able to sustain the workload of supporting our 270 plus members to the very best of our ability. As we facilitate chamber events, our organization is making a comeback and our subcommittees are now back in the swing of things. Several community engagements and events and programs that take place in our great city are facilitated by the Chamber of Congress. I'm excited to share the accomplishments over the past year. So this is kind of boring but needed to know stuff. So these are our number of walk-ins, an average of six to seven um, visitors that we have in our building for an annual average of 371. 
We receive an average of eight phone calls per day, which totals about 2,120. Over the past year, we've given out 42 visitor packets mailed at the direct request of potential visitors, 224 visitor packets mailed as a result of the California road trip ads, and 250 relocation packets distributed to Vandenberg Space Force Base, and 13 mailed to potential relocation. Uh, 32 information requests sent via email at the direct request of potential visitors. Moving on to our website analytics. So this is for the entire year, January through December of 2022. Our number of page visits are 20,504. Number of page hits, 368,347. Number of unique visitors is 14,092. Social media. Um, we have really increased our social media reach. Um, for our Facebook, we have 93,346. And then for page visits, 10,663. In 2021, we had 2,940 followers. We have increased in the year of 2022 to 3,205. For our Instagram, we have 38,391 reaches. Profile visits, 4,252. 2021, we had 1,838 followers. We now have 2,301. Moving on to our community engagement events that we held in 2022. We started off the year kicking off with our annual Lompoc Restaurant Week, uh, collaboration <coughs> with uh, Santa Maria Chamber for State of Vandenberg Space Force Base. We facilitated State of the City. Our summer Old Town Market made a huge comeback. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, we had our annual awards banquet, our Scarecrow Contest, Military Affairs Appreciation Barbecue at Vandenberg Space Force Base, Old Town Trick or Treat, Small Business Saturday, and with the support of the City of Lompoc, hosted our first annual Small Business Saturday Old Town Market. We also relaunched our leadership Lompoc Valley Group, so back to Old Town Market. So we had over 60 plus local vendors and nonprofits and community-based organizations that participated weekly. We increased foot traffic and revenue for the surrounding small businesses. The event fostered community relationships and awareness of community resources, increased sponsorship opportunities and engagement. We highlighted local artists through live entertainment opportunities and reestablished a sense of community post the pandemic. Overall attendance, approximately 5,000 attended. Our other annual event that we do is our annual awards banquet in which we highlight small businesses. Um, we usually have a man and woman of the year. Last year there was no nominations for any men of the year, unfortunately, so we hope that changes this year. Um, we were really pleased um, to add a new category um, with outstanding community support. Then we had our Small Business Hero Excellent Award for a business that has been in business for 10 years or more. Um, and then our New Business Award, which was two years. And then we did our Chamber Volunteer of the Year. We hosted our Military Affairs Committee. Um, Military Appreciation Barbecue, in which we collaborate with other um, community partners and host a barbecue to feed our airmen and airwomen on base. And there was an upward of 453 that were served this year, and that event was sponsored by Explore Lompoc. Again, we did our scarecrow competition um, and our Old Town Trick or Treat. Our advocacy and government um, affairs in collaboration with Cal Chamber, we joined several coalitions and signed over 13 bills with state government and provided letters of support for the small business community. S and we, in addition to that, we partnered with Santa Barbara Foundation to provide office hours at the Lompoc office to have one-on-one -on -one assistance where, where we were able to award 11 small businesses here in Lompoc with micro grants totaling over $27,500. For our member support and networking, we hosted 16 ribbon cutting ceremonies celebrated with new businesses and acknowledgements of milestones and four chamber business after hour mixers. 
As I stated before, we hosted uh, the first ever Small Business Saturday Old Town Market. Um, we had 25 small and micro business vendors participated, eight local food trucks, 350 plus attendees. In addition to that, we also hosted our Shop Small event, which 17 small businesses participated. And then to end off the year, um, we collaborated with Vandenberg Space Force Base Family Readiness Center. Um, this year we were given the opportunity to sponsor a room at this event. This event is put on, um, I think this is their second year doing it, um, but it is for children in the military who either have special needs or have a parent who is deployed. And so they set up rooms with different themes and so we partnered with Lompoc Rotary and Union Bank and we hosted a room for those children. These are a list of our new chamber members that enrolled in the year of 2022 with a total of 26 brand new members. This is a list of our upcoming chamber events for this year in 2023, which can also be found on our website, lompoc.com, or on our social media pages. And now I would like to turn over the rest of our presentation to our board member, Luis Castaneda. Take it over, Jeff. Got you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Luis Castaneda. I'm on the board for the Economic Development Committee. I um, wanted to give you guys an update of where we're at, what we've been working on. So we four members. We're small but mighty. Everybody puts in a ton of effort, a ton of time trying to help beautify, make uh, Lompoc a little bit better. Our four members are myself, Luis Castaneda. Mike Seawall, Tim Harrington, and Myra Soto. Our mission statement. As a committee of volunteers, we aim to promote and encourage proactive development by partnering with businesses, industry, and community residents to expand the quality of life to retain, uh, to retain the diverse fabric of the Lompoc Valley. Basically, we want to continue improving Lompoc. We want to be a part of Lompoc. We want to embrace Lompoc, but also help it grow. Our vision. Our vision is to help attract, retain, and expand businesses to increase and diversify the city's economic growth, pinpoint changing economic trends, and develop recommendations to our city officials while collaborating to maximize interest in the Lompoc Valley. Committee goals. We want to focus on three main portions. Um, it's not everything we do, but we do put a high focus on these. Economic growth, youth-focused support and attraction, and citywide beautification. Each one of those um, topics has pretty much a life of its own, a strategy of its own. Um, if anyone's ever interested, feel free to reach out. We'd love to break it down. Also, we're always open to ideas, feedback to see how we can get better. Um, that was a very small uh, presentation, but we did want to highlight one of our partnerships with the retail strategies. So I'd like to read a report that they sent us. Um, retail strategies is a premier full service recruitment company that is contracted by the chamber. They offer the data, education, and one-on-one -on -one contact, plus a dedicated team of retail, re, real estate experts proactively uh, cataloging the city of Lompoc and contacting realers, retailers on our behalf. They help us recruit um, businesses coming to town. So since their initial partnership with our city in 2016, when they were contracted by the City of Lompoc Economic Development Division, they were responsible for six retail restaurant businesses that opened in Lompoc. The Vika Stalling, president of the Lompoc Valley Chamber of Commerce, reports Lompoc's first partnership with Retail Strategies proved successful with their team recruiting uh, Planet Fitness, Blaze Pizza, Five Below, Starbucks, Ulta, and Famous Footwear to our city. The chamber remains focused on economic growth and prosperity, and re-engaging with Retail Strategies allows us to strengthen our economic development arm. Since the renewed partnership with the chamber in 2020, Retail Strategies has been engaged in multiple retail deals that remain in the pipeline. More, rec more recently, they have continued to recruit on the Chamber's behalf, having facilitated deals for uh, Boot Barn, Aldi's, as well as Big Lots. The team remains committed to recruiting new businesses to Lompoc and will continue to proactively reach out to potential businesses, property owners, brokers, and developers on behalf of the Chamber, as well as the city as a whole. Thank you. Any questions? Questions, anybody? Councilmember Ball. 
I just want to say thank you for the report. It's always exciting to see growth. And um, I know a couple of years ago there was, uh, you know, people were leaving and they weren't wanting to be members. And it's really good to see uh, times changing. It's good to see a lot more diversity and a lot more excitement at the chamber level. And I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with this summer and the rest of the year. Um, and we're excited to have the conversation soon. Thank you for the report. That was great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. Luther, any reports? Yes, thank you. Uh, just a few. Uh, I want to remind everybody in the community to come out for the council goal setting meeting uh, next Thursday, March 16th at uh, 6.30 here in the chambers. And then I also want to invite the public to come out and see the newly renovated Thompson Park Playground that was uh, fully grant funded. Uh, there's a picture up here on the screen. It's, uh, it's looking beautiful. And as you come out, if you could please uh, scan with your phone the QR code that's on the sign and fill out a quick survey to let us know what you think of it. And then also at the library, there's lots going on at the public library. Uh, there's the kids can sign up to earn burgers through the In-N-Out Burger Cover to Cover reading program. They can sign up either at the main library or the village branch library. And the library is also holding a Peeps diorama contest. And I think they put together a little video to explain a little bit about that. Yeah, and finally, uh, we're excited to share that our public information officer, Samantha Scroggins, along with the aquatic supervisor, Mike Espino, Espino and local videographer, Brian Panetta, worked together to put together a lifeguard recruitment video that has received the WAVE Public Access Award for the best public service announcement. Uh, I'm going to close this out by sharing that video again in our, and let you everybody know that our Lompoc Aquatic Center is still recruiting uh, lifeguards at this time. So please uh, fill an application. I was coming here to s swim uh, quite a lot because I surf here locally. And uh, I worked, uh, retired from UPS after about 25 and a half years. Swimming's real handy on keeping you in shape for surfing. And I've always kind of enjoyed being around the water. And so I kind of feel at home here and you meet a lot of people, a lot of the public, a lot of nice people. I feel from my time working here, it definitely helped me be more of a social person. Um, this, really, this isn't a quiet job, especially during rec swim. Uh, you have to use your voice and you have to be vigilant. And when something's going on, you have to speak out. There's multiple jobs here, such as a clerk, if you want to be a clerk or a lifeguard, or even a WSI, water safety instructor, and a head guard, as you slowly want to move up. Uh, one of the benefits of working here is it helps you get your foot in the door because it's a city job. So that would make the hiring process much easier for you if you find any other city-related jobs that you're interested in. Uh, so I was born and raised in Lompoc, and throughout high school I played water polo. So I was around the pool a lot, not the aquatic center a lot, and it made sense to me to make that transition and it allowed me to have a flexible schedule and go to school while working at the same time and I got to work with a lot of my friends at the same time and learn skills that have set me up for my foundation with the Lompoc Fire Department. So 
Another benefit of working here is it works with your schedule, it starts your retirement. So I would say the pros of working here is a flexible schedule that fixes my hours, as well as building a strong community between both the patrons here and the workers that you have. For a first job, it's an excellent first job. A lot of responsibility, you learn a lot. But for an older person, there's still plenty of challenges and plenty of uh, rewards. I do feel that working with it in this position in particular uh, as a lifeguard, it helps us a lot better connect with the people here. Um, whenever people need help, we're always in the position to do so. Uh, and it can vary to anything uh, with first aid or just talking to them or any questions regarding the pool. So during my time at the Aquatic Center, I had the opportunity to meet a lot of people. And a lot of people at the fire department that I currently work with were former lifeguards. And so they talked to me and taught me about the fire service and what I could expect and ended up doing ride-alongs with them. And I really liked the CPR and the first aid portion of lifeguarding and I wanted to learn more and see what else I could do with that and that's what led me to going to my EMT Academy, learning to be an EMT, working on an ambulance and then eventually transitioning to the fire department where I continue to use those skills today. A lot of good people here, you know, good co-workers, the, team, the camaraderie strong. And you take the class to become a guard and you become a guard here as opposed to another pool or facility, then you get to uh, be reimbursed on the uh, class fees, and of course you get to swim for free. Be part of our lifeguard team. Join us at the Lompoc Aquatic Center. Learn more at www.cityoflompoc.com forward slash recreation. 805-875-8100. That's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Luther. We'll go ahead and move on to consent. Um, we'll wait a few minutes on public comment here. Number 8758201. Um, in the meantime, I, I'll make a quick comment on consent here just to take up time while we wait on public comment. Um, that our internal loan has now increased from 6.2 to 7 million on that, Mr. Quillen, there's a lot of money that we have to put into the landfill. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting the required time for the phone to ring. Okay, required time's over. <laughs> We'll do a motion. I'll Council make a Member motion. Vega, thank you. <laughs> um, I'll make a motion that we accept consent calendar as written. I'll second. Okay. Let's vote. And everything passes there. Good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'll move to oral communications now. If this, this is a two-minute period, or three-minute period, I'm sorry. I'm, we will wait a few minutes here. Number 875-8201. Okay. While we wait, Madam Clerk, was there any written communications? Yes, ma'am, or I'm sorry. Oh, good grief. Yes. <laughs> Has very bad habit. Yes, sir. There was one email received from Ann McCarty. It was given to um, council, to staff. It was placed on the website and is outside for the public. Thank you. You're welcome, <laughs> sir. Hello, my name is Lucy Tomes Harrington. My husband and I have called Lompoc our home for over 40 years. Thank you to each one of you on this dais for all that you've done for your service to the community. I work for Santa Barbara Research Center, GM Hughes Electronics and Raytheon Vision Systems for over 32 years in various capacities, including international business, contracts, and ultimately product line director and senior member of the leadership team. I retired to consult. 
I was honored to be named Lompoc's Woman of the Year in 2019 and am humbled to be included with the list of the women uh, that preceded me and who came after me. I'm engaged in many organizations, primarily in support of various nonprofits, working to improve our community and the lives of students in our community. I'm here to speak as an individual and not a member of any organization. In the, it is in the capacity of serving others that I met and work with now Council Member Gilda Cordova. Well before she was appointed to City Council and her subsequent uh, election by District 1 voters in 2020. I know her to be a self-starter, an experienced, intelligent businesswoman, as well as a person of faith. Most of all, I know her to be a high-integrity leader. She knows Lompoc and she knows its citizens because she grew up here. She went to school here. She started her business here. She raised her son here. She delivered the eulogies to both her dad and her sister here and cares for her mom here and her home is here. She is a passionate advocate for the community of Lompoc and for all of its citizens. So this gives pause. What group is behind a campaign to smear council member Cordova's good name? What would motivate them to conduct a smear campaign? Is it to disrupt a well-functioning city council which is making positive change in the community? Is it because she is a woman of color in a leadership position? Is it because there is a business motivation which would benefit them? Council member Cordova works tirelessly for the community, the community that she grew up in, the community that she lives in with her family and extended family. She is a leader and a council member who looks after the interests of the entire community, not just a select few. Lompoc is fortunate to have her on the dais. Any other public comment? Moving right along, we'll go ahead and go to council comments and meeting reports. Uh, council Member Vega. Uh, my only uh, comment is it's nice to see everybody out here and supporting law folk <laughs> and to hear the chamber uh, give us positive uh, feedback is what we need to hear all the time, which is really nice. It's nice to see the events coming. I hope the events double up in the future because uh, Lompoc needs some things and more things to do for the families uh, on the weekends. You know, it's uh, for people that aren't 21, sometimes some of those events are important for families. So I hope we continue to do that. Um, I know my mother's watching who is a stroke victim. I'd like to say it of my mom, Nora, and she watches me every other Tuesday. So with my grandkids out there. So anyway, I wanted to say hi, mom. Okay, thank you. Council Member Ball. Well, I don't have really any reports to say, but I just, um, you know, this week has been really interesting uh, for many reasons, but I just wanted to say uh, one quick thing. Uh, I served with Councilwoman Gildo Cordova on the Economic Development Committee, and I learned a lot from her, and I have the utmost respect for her integrity, and I continue to be honored to serve with her on the City Council, and I hope she stays. I'm going to go ahead and... and go out of line here and just make a quick, quick uh, couple of comments. I'd like to acknowledge the Daughters of the American Revolution with their wreaths across America. I wish we'd have had a better day and a slightly better turnout, but it was a great event that they hosted. And I'd like to take a personal level here and thank the city staff for all the emails, cards, flowers, and kind words on the passing of my father last week. So thank the staff here. Um, Councilwoman Cordoba. I just want to say thank you to those that uh, have come out in support of me, both publicly uh, here today, that have reached out to me and have expressed their support or their love for me. Um, I thank you know, my family for always being here for me. And I just want to say that um, in recent days, I have been on the receiving end of attacks by a select few in this community. 
I say a select few because although the letter that was sent into City Hall by a gentleman claiming to be a local resident of Lompoc was written by him, one individual, the information was then shared on local website owned by Lompoc residents and shared on social media pages also belonging to local residents. In addition, emails have been blasted out um, by more than a couple of individuals, one including my own planning commissioner. This tells me that there is a select few that have made it their mission to discredit me, confuse, and distort the minds of the residents of Lompoc, and also ultimately they seek to have me removed from the seat. In recent days since the allegations were made public, I have worked hard to submit my proof to city attorney and I have released video statement yesterday on my campaign Facebook page to address the allegations. I have also provided proof today via a written statement from the County of Santa Barbara Assessor's Office that absolutely clears me from having received any such uh, credits, homeowner's credits um, for my property that is in question that people are claiming that I live at. Ultimately, I had prepared a statement and I, I'm not gonna finish my statement as I wrote it because I feel like <clears throat> It's an easy excuse and it's hard for the residents of Lompoc um, to believe or understand that there are individuals here that do not believe that a Latino, middle-aged, um, hardworking migrant child that came to this city could escalate to the point where you can have more than one property in the city of Lompoc. And there is a bias. I assure you, I will just say, I assure you, I do not live at Lewis Drive. My family is here. They know where I park my car every night and where, my, where I park my head, <laughs> what pillow, what bed, what address. Um, none of those people that are willing to, to speak out um, in such a negative manner are ever gonna show up to a council meeting because they're the same people that don't show up um, for the things that need to be done and the hard work that needs to be performed in this community. So I don't want to take up your time by defending myself. I just wanted to make a public statement and let you know that I live in District 1 and I will continue to reside there and regardless of what anyone says, unless they come and bring evidence otherwise, I know where I live. The city attorney knows where I live and I have made my claim and I thank all of you for Having believed in me, for those of you that do, and for those of you that have any doubt, I hope that the proof that I am able to provide um, tells you that I am um, your public servant. Thank you. All right, I will go ahead and adjourn the Lompoc City Council meeting to our next regular meeting at 6.30 p.m. on March 21st. Thank you.